The SPATSTAT package is the first place to go for spatial point pattern analysis. For simplicity, everything will be only in two dimensions. But there's no reason why three-dimensional data can't be analyzed this way, and SPATSTAT does have some functionality for data in three dimensions. These two dimensions will make a flat plane. Since SPATSTAT closely implements the published theory of point patterns, you'll need to learn some of the language. First, a point is any location in the 2D space. For data on a flat plane, this is specified by an x-y coordinate pair, where x and y can be anything between plus and minus infinity. There might not be anything happening at a point, it's just any location on the plane. An event, however, is where something is happening. It's one of your data points. Sometimes I might call an event a point, and most people will do that. But strictly, in the literature, a point means a location in the space, and an event refers to an observed data point. For example, consider a tree scientist examining the position of trees. Although trees can exist at any point, the locations where the trees actually are are your events. Most spatial analyses are confined to a finite study area, and this area is called the window. Events happening outside the window are unobserved. A spatial point pattern is the set of observed events and the window. A spatial point process is a stochastic process. It's like a random number generator for events in a window. Much of spatial point pattern analysis is spent making inferences about the point process that may have generated a data set. Spatial point processes may be defined over the whole of two-dimensional space, but are only observed in a window. In a forest, the spatial process would depend on the soil quality, the way trees reproduce, how the trees have been chopped down, the wind direction, many other things. And if you are a tree scientist, you're probably going to recall the height, the width, the species, and other information about each tree. In the spatial point pattern jargon, these are called marks, and you have a marked point pattern. The height and width of a tree are examples of continuous numerical marks, and the species is a categorical mark. SPATSTAT stores spatial point patterns in its PPP objects, which stands for planar point pattern. These contain the event coordinates, the window, and if it's a marked point process, the marks. SPATSTAT defaults to a unit square for the window, so the simplest PPP object needs only x and y coordinates. You can also plot PPP objects with plot, print them to the console with print, or show their summary information with summary to get basic information. The simplest point process model is complete spatial randomness, or CSR for short. It means no part of the window is any more special than any other part, and that the chance of finding an event at any location is the same everywhere. Nothing interesting is happening anywhere. Testing this hypothesis would be of interest to a tree scientist, since rejecting it might show that some parts of the forest are producing more trees than others, or that the trees are clumping together or spacing themselves out. SPATSTAT has a number of tests for complete spatial randomness, including the quadrat test, which is where the window is divided into parts, typically 20 or so squares, and then the number of points in each square are counted. If the process is completely spatially random, then the number of points in the subregions come from a Poisson distribution, a simple distribution for count data. The differences between observed counts and expected counts lead to a test statistic with a chi-squared distribution, and large or small values of that test statistic indicates deviation from complete spatial randomness. For the next exercises, you'll learn how to create PPP objects and perform a quadrat test using SPATSTAT.